What's up, guys? Welcome to the Serving It Up podcast, where I get to know individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. Now, today's guest, he's sometimes <laughs> called the lyrical chef, you know? He's born in Monterey, grew up in Salinas, San Jose. Now he reps all the way from the Bay. That's as close to a rap that I can get to, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a rapper and producer with a unique style and sound that this is distinctively chow. Now, combining infectious delivery and playful vocals that melt West Coast hip hop swag with experimental pop, he tackles Asian stereotypes with playful lyrics, including Boba, Dragon Ball Z, ABGs, Hamtaro, you name it. He launched his first uh -huh. album, Simmering, and he recently dropped Silk Road. He goes by the name Chow Main, the homie Chow, AKA Charles. What's up, homie? Welcome to the podcast. Hello, Wallace, Six Pack Chef. Thanks for having me on today. Yes, sir. So I got to quickly preface to everybody who's listening is that I relate with you because of food analogies, cultural mm -hmm. backgrounds, oh, and yeah. upbringing. We got, we got some mutual friends. And all of that is really why I respect and rock with you. And shout out for always repping, you know, Asian Americans, as well as the Asian community and everything you do, dude. So Definitely. shout out to you on that. Yes, now, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So you already started that. So this is really cool. So all about hospitality. I asked you, what's something that we can drink or eat during this podcast? So what do you got? Uh, so I got some tea. This is called Blue Mountain Oolong, I think. And it has like ginseng, licorice, and uh, a few other things. But it's really good. It has a, a lot of umami. Can't really, I can't really tip this to show you. but So maybe I can. I can you do it? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, uh, it's good, though. True. I, I had almost the same. I was, like, I was like, I'll do my family proud on this one. I've got like green tea, a little goji berries, ginseng, um, nice. ginger. But anyways. Yeah, that, that ginseng gives a little kick. Cheers. Dude. Hey. But yeah, man. So how you been? How's everything? Uh, chilling. You know, been working a lot this quarantine. At first, it was kind of slow back when it started back in like March or something. And then I feel like I was forced into just trying to create new types of content in like April and, and May and whatnot. So I was bumping out a bunch of like freestyle videos and, and whatnot. Um, but really I was, uh, I was spending a lot of time, you know, before lockdown even finished, uh, finishing up my next project, which is coming out in, uh, September, I think. Okay. Yeah. Summer. And, um, yeah, uh, I, the album was like pretty much done. I was supposed to have a bunch of video shoots this summer, but they all got, you know, canceled or postponed wow. because of, because, yeah. you know, yeah. it's not safe to have so many people. Okay. Um, but you know, yeah, uh, music's still there. So, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk to that. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, yeah. so, all right, let's get right into this dude. So first things eat good. Let's talk food. Oh, so yeah. We have to talk food because first off how I found you or how I ever got to know about you was a couple years ago. I was looking for music with food or related to food. Mm -hmm. Simmering came out, tasty dumplings, moon cakes. Yeah, those were things that popped up. And for those who are listening, those are, yeah. those are, not, those are food items, but those are actually names and EPs of Chow's. Um, so let's let's talk and tell people who might not know where's where's Chow from. Where's Chow Ming from? What's the name about? Oh, so it, it came from like a lot of different things. I would say the first thing foremost would be that, uh, you know, Chow is my nickname growing up because my name is Charles. And, you know, my grandparents, especially my grandma, when she tries to pronounce Charles, she can't. She says like, she says like, Chow, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, that was that was kind of my nickname. And it again became a nickname when I was in high school because uh, I think the Hangover movie had just come out and people were calling me Mr. Chow. Because oh, I would just act hella stupid like that back in high school and shit. Um, and so actually when I started rapping uh, when I was in high school, like people called me Mr. Chow. And that was kind of like the name that I was running with. Um, but then, you know, I think like a little later on, I changed it to Chow Main for a few reasons. Uh, you know, I, I think the first thing was like when I put out, when I started, I think, trying to seriously release music. So probably my first release in 2017, uh, I wanted to... I wanted to have this theme of like my first project being around my Asian American experience, uh, since that was something I didn't really see that much in the media. And I feel like, you know, my family and my own upbringing had, uh, has its own flavor that I think like other Asian Americans could relate to. So like chow mein was one, it was like a pun, but two, like, I felt like chow mein itself, the, the, the dish is like a distinctly, uh, Chinese American dish 
you know um there there are you know there there's there's definitely like fried noodles in china but i think what people think of now is like chow mein is like specifically like a panda express type dish yeah. which is like not really it's not really chinese but it's not really american fully it's a hybrid so i figured you know it was kind of an allegory for when i was putting out that first project and trying to talk about this like duality of identity it was uh that was like it just worked <laughs> and yeah so that was that's was, that's kind of how it started out um and now it's just evolved into something past that that's crazy i mean i i relate with like your name getting changed from like from charles to chow and like your grandmother not being able to to pronounce it like for me yeah. my grandparents it's so my name is wallace obviously and then yeah. they would be like wallacey and then when my yeah. friend would come over and they'd be like can i call uh, is wallace out can can wallace come out to play or like can he come out and then my yeah. grandmother and grandparents they like call from the house and be like wallacey wallacey <laughs> and, then <they'd> ask, <laughs> yeah, right? and then, the, yeah. then my boys would be like yo wallacey the hell is, <laughs> who is this and then it became, yeah oh, yeah my other grandma uh would pronounce it chalia because uh okay because uh yeah she because my mom called me charlie um so her mom called me charlia yeah so <laughs> let the people know what's your cultural background uh so ethnically i'm chinese my mom's from shanghai uh but my dad's from vietnam he's he's like blood chinese but you know he's part of the wave of uh chinese vietnamese people who uh you know fled the Japanese invasion in World War II. So they went to Vietnam and they, they were in Saigon. And uh, so um, I would say like culturally it's pretty Chinese, but like a lot of Vietnamese influence, especially on my dad's side of the family, you know, a lot of the food we cook at home is like Vietnamese dishes and half of our family speaks Vietnamese uh, just as much as they speak Cantonese, even though, you know, by blood we're all Chinese. So yeah, that's my background. And that whole background, all, all to me that sounds like is tasty food delicious yeah. food like oh, definitely man really wise the, yeah. the cultures of of vietnam of south asia of chinese shanghai they've got like the best of all the worlds dude yeah um, yeah I mean, it's it like all that. different flavor profiles too you know like my well my parents are, are divorced so you know my mom doesn't really uh cook you know vietnamese style but she'll cook like shanghai style which has yeah. a lot of like, vinegar um yeah it's, it's like a it's like really sweet and sour uh versus roll the 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 wrappers like with the stick do that she rolled oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. so that um yeah just all the dishes uh i don't know the names of half the dishes you know there's like some potato ones eggplant ones and whatnot but they all have you know she kind of uses the same like style for all of them so it's a lot of vinegar and a lot of like yeah uh soy sauce and, and sugar um versus you know um yeah my my uh my dad's side it's a, it's a lot of like Vietnamese influence cooking. Um, so completely different flavor profiles. Like the sourness doesn't come from vinegar. It comes from like, you know, maybe pineapple or like tomato or something. Um, and then, yeah, lime, a lot of lime. Uh, and yeah, no, it's, it's, it's awesome being able to be exposed to all these different kinds of, I think, like Chinese style cooking. Because yeah. um, there, there's so much, like people think Chinese food is a monolith, but it really is like hundreds and hundreds of different styles. For sure. Now, I wanted to talk to you about, for me, I've always put it where food and music go hand in hand, right? I feel mm-hmm. like they go hand in hand. They're like two universal languages that no matter where you're from, what culture, whatever, you can't speak or whatever, you still understand music and you can still understand food. Right. And you do that with your music. And something that you always talk about is that I like how you treat your music like food. So you treat it like a dish where your flavors are, you know, sometimes sweet, sometimes bitter. Um, yeah, yeah. But there's one thing that's always happening is they're always tasty. Yeah, so they're always tasty. Let's talk yeah. about that, boy. Let's, what is tasty? Let's so. Well, tasty started because, uh, well, when I was first uh, starting to put on my music, maybe like 2017, and I, I, I had just like started social media, or whatever it was on Instagram, um, I would just cook at home every day for fun. And I would just like film myself cooking and you know, on the off chance, I, huh? What's up? You do a lot. For those who are watching, like, <laughs> like oh, chow, you're going to get way more. You're going to think you're following like a food account versus like a rapper. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't been doing it as much recently because I've been pretty busy with the music stuff, but I'm going to get yeah. back onto it. But yeah, no, I would, I would cook just like random stuff. And at the end I'll take a bite. And I think I just said like tasty, like off, off top one time. And like, hell people just start replying to the story like 
repeating tasty. So I was like, oh, I guess this is a thing now. Um, so I kept kind of doing it and that kind of movement started growing. And uh, eventually I decided, you know, uh, let's make a song out of it. Um, so the song Tasty, actually I have a music video for that coming out um, in July 24th or something like that. Um, right. But uh, when I started putting that song together, I decided, you know, like this phrase and this like term has become like such an integral, I think, part of uh, my brand and kind of identity as someone who likes to blend food and music mm -hmm. that, um, uh, you know, the song itself wasn't. I wanted it to be a little personal too, as well as fun. So, um, you know, it's really bouncy, it's catchy, but at the same time, like you listen to the verses, I'm, I'm trying to talk a little bit more about my, my experience growing up too and some real shit that happened to me. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like, yeah, that, that song was like the apex of the Simmering Project and the whole concept of the Simmering Project was to, you know, present music in a form of like a food uh, of, of a, you know, multi-course meal. Yeah, yeah, you talk about that a lot of times. And I was actually just, that's the next thing I was gonna say. I was like, you always tell people, whether it's like interviews or in person or whatever, that you treat an album like you would treat, like a chef would treat a tasting menu or a, a multi-course menu, where for us as chefs, we try to create a story. We try to create yeah. a story and like, you know, make you go through different emotions, through different courses and stuff and you build your albums and your releases like that. Like you yeah. don't straight up peer hard and then suddenly yeah. you go off and. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say like all of them are gonna continue being like that because this next project isn't really framed in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, you know, Mooncakes, the EP was food centric. Well, not complete, not as food centric, but you know, it had themes here and there because it's all mooncakes and dumplings or whatever. Uh, simmering itself was definitely like, I think it just made sense to present it that way because um, that was like a collection of, you know, different songs I had been working on that last year and all these songs sounded so different that, uh, you know, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like one whole vibe. You couldn't listen to the whole album and expect every song to be the same, you know? So it just made sense to frame it in that sense where, you know, uh, I kind of gave you an appetizer. I gave you something sweet, something sour, something bitter some stuff that's more fun, some stuff that's more like serious uh, and, you know, a little mixture of things. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the flavors yeah. is just like. Yeah. I think that's why Simmering was very easy to listen to. Yeah. Like it wasn't just go, you could like listen to it for various things. So it was, yeah, yeah. That was dope, I, I dig that. And um, so let's quickly talk about, you are from technically Cali. Mm -hmm. Cali, right? Yeah. Right. Cali food scene is insane. It, yeah, it's so diverse out here, and I didn't learn to appreciate it until you know uh, visiting other states and seeing how how not up to par a lot of the uh, you know non American cuisines are. Especially with um, like food. Yeah, definitely. Well, when I grew up in Salinas, there was you know there was Asian food, but it still wasn't on par as with like uh, the main Bay Area or like L A or six two six whatnot. But we did have a lot of really good Mexican food. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was a difference, you know, even between growing up between Salinas and San Jose, which are about an hour apart, maybe 60, 65 miles. Uh, San Jose is a much bigger city. Salinas is more like agricultural. Okay. Um, so we had a lot of, you know, good traditional American food and uh, good Mexican food in, in Salinas. Uh, but when I went to, up to San Jose, you know, we had that, but we also had amazing uh, Vietnamese food, um, Taiwanese food, a uh, little section where there's good Korean food. Um, and yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of good Asian foods and, and you know, other, other cultures as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just a blessing, I guess, to be here and, you know, have such ease of access to all these tasty foods. It's like, you guys are like a food trend mecca. You guys like start a lot of the food trends that go to like say New York and then the rest of the world and then up here, up, up to North here. Um, definitely. And especially cause like you do a lot of shows and stuff at festivals, like our boy, uh, Thai, when, when we do like Asians Never Die, the 626 market, all that kind of stuff. What are some food trends or food things that you've seen at these places or that you've been around that you hate? Yeah, I think, well, the, the festivals that I performed at are pretty fun because those festivals, they have, uh, they come up with some pretty interesting food concepts, you know, and, and the cool thing is like being at those festivals all day and, you know, kicking it with vendors, you people are always like coming over and bringing, offering like dishes and you know i get kind of get to try different things um 
I will say that uh, it is definitely more like street food that you find there. Um, and a lot of times street food is delicious. You know, a, a lot of stuff from like Taiwan night markets you'll see there, like uh, the big squids on the, on the what's it called, um, the chicken. Uh, off top, I'm remembering one of the, probably the two, my two favorite things off these uh, night markets have been one, the, the chicken skins. Yeah. Um, that is not. That is not. You're yeah. Amazing. Chicken skins, yeah. yeah, for sure. With the, uh, what's it called, what do they put on there? Like the Thai basil and- um, Oh, you have the, the top of the, the top seasoning. And the and yeah. yeah, yeah, that's bomb. Uh, also, this place had really good like barrier, like grilled cheese. Oh. Uh, yeah, you know, instead of the taco, but the taco is bomb too, but you know, you dip it in the soup and you eat it, uh. it has the lamb inside. It's pretty fire. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I do really enjoy those, those events. And uh, I hope like once this whole pandemic uh, is, you know, not as not as intense. Um, those will return. Hundred <laughs> percent, like for real. Uh, when like when we went the first time, we went to the six to six nine market. I was always still blown away at the amount of like unicorn drinks and corn and definitely like, like a lot of those. Boba. They make it so that it'll look cool for Instagram, you know. Yeah, no, without naming names, they they're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that good man. We're just more aesthetically pleasing than than taste, All but. Right. Yeah. Right, I'm going to bring you on to a segment that I like to call in the weeds. So you're a restaurant guy. So you, you don't understand the terms in the weeds. Um, so <laughs> we're slam packs, services coming in, all the chips. Yep. So we're going to do a little rapid fire pool. And you simply just give me the right turn. All right. All right, let's right, let's go. go. All right, let's do this. Dim summer pho. Dim what? Dim oh, dim summer pho. pho. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Uh, dim sum. Ooh. Instant noodle or ramen? Uh, ramen. Tendon or sea cucumber? Tendon. Boba or soju? Boba. Kakao or siomai? Uh, siomai. Fresh rolls or the fried spring rolls? Uh, fresh rolls. Three shots of penny or one cup of traditional Chinese medicine? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Chinese medicine. <laughs> <Not penny. laughs> hey. Uh, sweet dig all right man all right let's talk about let's talk about look good dude let's talk about aesthetics health lifestyle okay. that kind of stuff so as as a musician as an artist it's important mm -hmm. to be diverse to constantly be you know leading trends versus following trends and right. you're no stranger to that anybody that follows you knows that you're not the typical guy when it comes to style or it comes to look even your music right. talks about that too so you know crocs the different types of hair um tie-dye um the big jade buddha you rocking the buddha chain right now i think i am, I am right here oh so all that kind of stuff like where's the inspiration come from there or do you have a stylist or was this something oh no, i mean i just i just want to express myself in my own way and be me you know um so i i haven't really you know dug too deep or thought about this too much i just kind of buy things i like you know i like colors i'm a colorful person um so you know i really like primary colors i wear those a lot um and i, I feel like my style changes like over time too you know i i really i, I first hopped on like crocs and sketchers like a few years ago because everyone was making fun of them i was like you know these aren't that bad like i kind of like them they're comfortable I hate them, and, man. Yeah, bro. And then, like, they started popping off, actually, low-key, uh, this, like, last year, maybe two years. Um, Skechers or the... Uh, Crocs. Uh, Skechers a little bit, too. I, I feel like Skechers, like, has some changes in their design department. Uh, but well, I, I definitely see, like, Skechers does all the knockoffs of every popular shoe. You know, they have their own designs on them, which are, which are kind of funny. Um, so, it, it's like, uh, yeah, there's that. You know, I try to you know, be colorful, get stuff that I like, get stuff that uh, represents me and my culture and um, who I am as a person, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> that's what Crocs do you have? Oh, I have too many. I, I probably have, probably, uh, uh, I have like six or seven. <laughs> Dude, I yeah. hated Crocs when they first came out because, like, that's what kitchen sh chefs would wear. Oh, yeah, that's what y'all had to wear. I, I, uh, I just... You know, at the time I was looking for slippers, it was either Crocs or Nikes, uh, like slides. And I just saw the Crocs first, so I was like, fuck it, you know? You have the ones where you can, like, design them on the front? Oh, I don't, I don't have pins for them. I'm not, I'm not that deep in. I just okay, have... I was, I was like, ciao, we gotta, we gotta talk about that. Don't get that far. 
Um, I, saw, I saw these uh, Gucci Crocs. Gucci and Crocs made a collab, and it's super, like, blinged out and shit. I feel like you would rock those. You would get those. You would get I them probably, for a photo shoot and then bring them back. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I've done that. I've done that for several shoots. My, my, oh. my shoot, the ABG song, um, like, when did we, shoot? we shot that, like, two years ago? I'm wearing that Versace robe for that scene. Yeah. Bro, you know, at the Versace store, you can't actually return. So... What we did was we found a loophole. If you order online, you can return. Uh, so we ordered we ordered that robe online just so that we could return it after. Is it what is the red one? Yeah, the red one. How much was that one? Uh, I forget, like eight nine hundred. Should just kept it. <laughs> just kept it. <laughs> I should have just kept it. Um, but you know, like when am I gonna walk around in a bathrobe, bro? <laughs> Whatever you want. I guess. Honestly, it wasn't that comfortable. It, it oh, was, really? it was like, it was nice, but it was like a rough towel. Oh, yeah. No good. If it was like really silky, you know, I, I would wear that shit all the time. I feel you. All right, let's talk about now. I think, especially for you being in Cali and LA and all that, especially with such a big giant cultural scene, whether it's Asian, whether it's music, there's like, mm. I guess like four fashion statements that happen that are pretty common. Right, so you've got like your sort of you overseas um, the hype beasts. All they care about is just the retail price, all the brands. Um, yeah, you've got your Kevin Nguyen's. You know, you got your Kevin yeah. Nguyen's. You Scott got Gethy your- with the Supreme bag and the dangly exactly. crop earring. That's exactly. the Kevin Nguyen uniform. You got your um, you got your ABGs. Yeah. Your ABGs, and then you got your corporate swag. You got your yeah, swag. yeah. So like, I was I wanted to ask you is like, are there any likes or dislikes of any of these or which one do you be like i gotta like slow down or you're like, yeah i mean i think I, I like to take elements of each you know uh definitely i have some hype clothes but i i don't like to just buy something because of the hype you know um there's stuff that i have from like hype brands that just were not like hype sales or not like um you know stuff that people were going crazy for but i thought they were cool um and i think that yeah, it's a, it's a combination of things. Definitely, I feel like people put other people in boxes or themselves in boxes based on, like, different styles of fashion. But I think, like, you know, there's such a wide uh, array of, like, what you can be and what you, you know, how, how you can express yourself that you don't need to be confined to these certain boxes. Um, and definitely, I, I think there's people that do both. Uh, like, you know, I have some friends who uh, went on to work in like tech and you know they're more like the corporate uniform and whatnot but they'll still wear you know some you know they'll rock some supreme or whatever <laughs> with their with their tech money um their tech money yeah and then i don't know bro it's i i feel like right now there's there's so much more than those four and people are just out here combining different styles and like the industry is is growing and faster than ever with like social media and like ease of entry to you know, local brands doing all this stuff and creating cool new designs and concepts that there's like, it's like music, bro. Uh, it's it's ever changing and melting together into. Do, yeah. do you ever get hate or do you, people ever go to you and be like, you know, your, your music's great, but I don't yeah. like your style or vice versa or any like that? Yeah, I mean, um, like online for sure. Uh, I would say like in person, yeah, I, I, people always act different in person, you know, like, even if somebody doesn't fuck with my music, they'll still, like, show fake love and stuff, <laughs> and be like, uh, you know, some, back, back, like, before lockdown happened, sometimes I'll go out, and people recognize me at, like, the mall or something in San Jose, or, like, something else, and people want to come up and take pictures, and then, uh, you know, I'll, uh, they'll tag me and stuff, and I'll see, like, oh, shit, they're not, like, following me or nothing, or, like, <laughs> not actually, like, um fucking with the music like that but it's cool it is what it is you know and uh, i'm still i feel like grateful in the first place to even be able to you know reach uh an audience like further than what i than than just people that you know already resonate you know what i mean because that means that means like the message is spreading out there to further than like what you can actually see um in terms of just like numbers and stats and whatever on the internet which is like you know what traditionally you know uh, managers and labels and whatever are looking at um so it's cool it's cool seeing that impact and you know <laughs> it's a sign of success sweet all right dude um we're gonna get into now the next set of rapid questions so it's called reps and sets dude so reps and sets all right let's you ready it's gonna be, okay. this gonna be a little shorter one because 
pretty easy day. All right. Gucci belt in a side bag or off whites and Balenciagas? Oh, uh, Gucci belt in a what? Side bag. Um, I'll, I'll go with the off whites and Balenciagas. The Asian SWAT mask or the arm sleeves for driving? <laughs> uh, I, I just gotta say the arm sleeve because I'm from San Jose. Uh, that's, that's like that's like the code here. I, I mean, I wouldn't personally rock one, but you know, that's just like I feel like it's the culture to my city. Okay, Sh this one I already know the answer, but I gotta tell shoes in the house or no? No, okay. fuck no. <laughs> I'll just get off the podcast. Unless, unless, unless they're house slippers, though, I guess if it's like you know, if you have hardwood floors everywhere and it's cold, you know then the house slippers are acceptable. You live in Cali. There is no cold over there. <laughs> hey, bro, San Francisco gets pretty cold. All right. Cool. But anyway, all right, let's get into live great, dude. Let's talk, about, let's talk about you, your upbringing, sort of as a brand um, and everything. So your story is very similar to mine, where mm -hmm. we have some common things, such as, like, you know, obviously immigrant parents, besides cultural background, Chinese all that stuff, food, but your grandparents came over and then they worked in a restaurant, mm -hmm. in restaurants, and yep. then and they did that for like 10 years and they finally opened up their own restaurant. Right, right. And it was crazy how that happened too, because, sorry? It was New Tokyo, right? It was like a Japanese Yeah, market. New Tokyo. So, so my grandparents came over uh, with my dad and two aunts and uncles, so them and four kids uh, as refugees <clears throat> after the Vietnam War. And so... They, they were sponsored by this Catholic church out in Monterey. That's how they randomly ended up in Monterey out of all places. Uh, so, you know, they were like kind of the only Asian people there. Um, they didn't speak any English. Uh, and so they eventually found a job in Marina working at this, uh, working at this Japanese restaurant. Um, and what happened was uh, my, my grandpa was like dishwasher. My grandma was like a waitress um, or I think bus girl because she actually couldn't take orders. Um, and like eventually like one winter or something, I don't know, the head chef like wanted to go on vacation. So he went on vacation they were like, all right, fuck it. You know, they told my grandpa, you're going to cook. <laughs> so like he became, you know, they trained him on how to make Japanese food and he just, you know, I guess became a chef instead of a dishwasher. Um, and he did that for like 10 years under, uh, Michi. Michi was, uh, the guy who, who helped put everybody on his Japanese guy. Um, and so they got really good at making Japanese food and eventually they started their own restaurant after 10 years of uh, working there called New Tokyo. Um, and yeah, they, they had that for a while. I think they sold it when I was in high school. Okay. Um, but when I was growing up, I used to go there after school and help out because it was just like a family affair. Everybody just worked there. So yeah, exactly. yeah. One of the, It's why I was like, there's so much about it that connects with it because I spent like my grand, my family worked in like, the, the food industry as well yeah. my dad tried to open up a restaurant so I grew up freaking on my weekends rolling like egg rolls and like takeout boxes and all this stuff that you you are you get at the same time yeah. and so with that being said you've got this pretty we're very similar in regards to all a lot of the Asian immigrant lifestyle etc right. but you ended up did you ended up going to UC Berkeley yeah yeah so what'd you go to UC Berkeley for uh, so I studied political economy. That's it's like uh, the structure of how our our you know uh, political systems are put in place and how that affects like uh, schools like economic thought. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then and my, my, my focus, my concentration, that was the Chinese economy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I spent like a year in classes, like focusing on like the Chinese economy and you know oh, learning about differences between you know. Uh, yeah, I guess American capitalism and Chinese state influenced capitalism. <laughs> now, I was going to bring that up because then it's like, okay, so from high school, family, upbringing of restaurants, go to UC Berkeley, yeah. you do your, you know, economics and all that. Then yeah. you don't use that and you become a rapper, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean. So well, where does that come from? Does your family, like, how does your family feel about, you know, you, know, you rapping? being a rapper you know, I, I was I was doing it while I was working at the same time um and they were fine with it as long as you know I'm making my money um and now I'm at a point or I was at a point where you know I was making enough off of just music alone so I stopped working um it's been a little slower now that there's no shows uh that it, you know it's, it's pandemic season 
Um, but I'm just taking this time to focus on my craft and whatnot. But yeah, no, it was an interesting journey. You know, I, I think like when I first went into to school, my parents wanted me to do like computer science or like uh, law or something, something that was like, you know, traditionally lucrative. But me, I was just never good at like math. Uh, I even tried like normal econ at first, but I was just terrible at uh, like the graphs and, and all quantitative stuff. Um, so that's kind of why one of the reasons I also shifted over because I, I did think it was like interesting learning a little bit more about how the world and, you know, kind of the systems in place worked. Um, but I was always more of a writer and a creative writer than uh, someone who was able to, I think, tackle hard numbers. Um, and so that ended up just being where I went into. And when I graduated, um, you know, I worked for a bit and I was just making music at home. I was living with my dad at the time. So I was just at my dad's house. I got like a hundred dollar mic, a $200 interface, like a pretty cheap setup relatively. Um, and it was just like putting stuff on SoundCloud <laughs> and whatever, um, until, until shit just like kind of started popping off and you know, here I am. Do they, does your family listen to your music? Uh, I think, well, I don't know. Some of them do, you know, I have a, I have a lot of little cousins <laughs> who do um is there my, any like awkwardness or anything like that based I on i don't know it, it is kind of weird when they talk about my own music sometimes but you know it's, it's never like too in depth i know my like my aunt always comments on all my youtube videos and stuff no. <laughs> yeah and then like uh you know everyone has like different opinions too and my mom she's more like uh she doesn't really know much about american music and right. she she's framing it through like chinese music she was, so she's just like oh i think you you need to like uh, wear makeup. I think you need to like get your hair more like, uh, uh, like a pop bar. I think you need to like dance. I think, like all this stuff. Like this more to be like low the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's it's all this. Uh, yeah, it's cool though. You know, everyone has their opinions, and you know, <laughs> I'm I'm just telling my own story. Got you. So next thing I want to talk about is we we sort of mentioned earlier was. ABG, Asian Baby Girls. They, right. That's also your EP. Now, this was 2017. This is when you popped off. This popped off and got viral yeah. on YouTube. Now, you mentioned it to me before that it was like a double, double-edged sword. Yeah, okay. So ABG was a song that I had originally written as a joke in like 2015 when I was in school. Which, by the way, uh, fire. It is so, it's like, um, it's one of those where you just listen, you're like, I, I get every single thing here. I understand. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it, it, it's, the ABG phenomenon is weird because, I mean, it's been a term since, like, we were kids, but I feel like it's changed in meaning and context in the last, like, maybe, like, five years or, like, ten years or something where it's not, it's not so negative no more. You have, like, I talk about this on Silk Road, too. I said it's weird that these girls are calling themselves ABGs. Um, you know, because, because like you wear lashes, you go to raves, whatever. And back in the day, it was like so different on what the meaning was. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, it was like when I put that song out originally, like on my SoundCloud before anybody even heard it in like 2015, it was me and this rapper K Sung from, uh, from LA, okay. uh, the Korean dude. And so we, we were just, um, I think we were like, we were just really high and we were making music one night and he was like, Hey, it would be funny if we made a song about like ABGs um, because like, it was just like something that we were seeing a lot. And so we wrote that song, uh, put it up and then it went like, like, I feel like underground viral or something at like a few of like the Asian frats in, uh, in like Berkeley and USC, UCLA and like, you know, around California. Um, but just like, it's a joke song, you know, cause it wasn't properly mixed and mastered or nothing. It was just like us fucking around on like a, a laptop mic. Um, and then, so when I started putting together the Mooncakes project in 2017, I was going through some of the old songs I had. So Dumplings was one of them, ABG was another one. And then I was working with Jordan Garrett, uh, who goes by Jiggle Frost now. And he was saying like, bro, this is, this one's a hit. Like, let's, let's, let, let's do something. Let's make it better. Um, and so I hit up k Sung again to see if he wanted to hop on the song, but he stopped rapping. You know, he started working, I think he, he's like an investment banker or something now. <laughs> but, so, yeah, so I'll, yeah, so I was like, fuck it, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll do the other verse. Uh, so I did two verses for the song. Um, and then I think originally, actually, I hit up uh, Dave Steezy from HBK Gang uh, okay. to hop on the song too. And he he did drop a verse, but it just wasn't as like relevant that as, as I thought it would be, or as I thought it could be. So, you know, the original verse was that like, the second verse, the Bimbarred out in San Diego, geeked up in San Jose. 
Yeah. Um, and then that was the one I wrote in 2015. 2017, when I decided to just write the other verse, I, I made it more descriptive and just like talk about like all black once you go out, brown hair turn blonde now, all that. Uh, and yeah, we put the song together. It came out on the mixtape or the EP, whatever. And then like a few months later, uh, I met somebody on set of another music video for Dumplings, uh, Sam Lee. And he heard the song. He's like, "Bro, let me let me give you money and let me direct it, and I'll make I'll make a legendary video." And that's that's how the ABG video came about. Which was legendary, literally. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an anthem. It's it's I love it. It's so fun. It, it yeah. sort of reminds me of like um like a the Hangover or um, any of those kind of party videos. Um, yeah, and that that video took a lot of ideation to get to that point. We, we ran through so many uh, concepts, like originally, so originally what we were gonna do for the video was, it was gonna be like a, a following a girl. It, it was gonna be a story where there was a girl who's, who's a main character and she was, you know, at the beginning was gonna get, be her getting out of bed, getting ready, like doing all the ABG stuff. And then like, there'd be a twist where it turns out like she's like an assassin or some shit. And then like, it, it turned into like an action movie and whatnot. Um, and that was like our original script and everything. Uh, and then I think like what ended up happening was like when we found the location that we eventually settled on for that video, which was that mansion, we decided to scrap everything in the past and just do everything in that mansion because it was, it was so much more uh, efficient. I think <laughs> like all, all those rooms you saw, so the gym, the movie theater, the, the patio villa, whatever, all that was in the same house. So we were actually able to shoot that whole thing in like a day instead of having like this whole like short film type of shoot. Um, and yeah, it came out the way it did. And, you know, we were pretty happy with it. That's great. That's great. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is do you, because of how you portray yourself in regards to your style, the, the things you talk about um, representing the Asian community and all that stuff, do you ever get hate? in regards to mm. going it's like for us a lot of times i think it's not as bad now but more people being like why are you trying to be black or why are you oh like, I see. you know yeah i mean i feel like i i haven't gotten that much because i feel like my music i've always tried to be completely authentic to being asian and talking about that and i am definitely doing it uh through a black art form in hip-hop and i'm very grateful that i'm allowed in this space um i would say that the only i think like negative experience in that term have been you know like uh i did a show in santa cruz i think i talked about this in another interview once but i did a show in santa cruz like two years ago okay. uh, at the catalyst uh, it was like a college show for uc santa cruz and these white kids came to the show and they brought like calculators and they came up to the front they're trying to toss the calculators on stage really? and, like, yeah yeah but i mean i wasn't tripping because i was like damn you guys paid tickets <laughs> so I'm getting paid for you to come in and <laughs> toss these calculators. So it's cool. Um, and, you know, there's like other times where it's just like um, definitely like uh, I'll show up to shows and then, you know, the guys working there are like, oh, are you, are you like sound engineering tonight? Or are you like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, dude, I'm, I'm performing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, in terms of like outright hate like that, um, I, I haven't encountered too much, uh, fortunately. Which is good. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's something that I feel like a lot of whether it's any especially when it comes to hip hop, anybody that's not from that's not not maybe not black, they'll you they'll get that hate sometimes, you know? Well I think like also I've been like fortunate enough to come up in a diverse area like the Bay Area where it's pretty common to see like a lot of people from different backgrounds coming together and uh doing things. You know, we're I feel like we're not as segmented in that like our friend groups that you see a lot here aren't just all one race clicking together. Um, and a lot of people in the music industry that I'm working with come from all kinds of different backgrounds and definitely a lot of artists. You know, I see a lot of other Asian rappers as well, a lot of uh, non-traditional rappers who are like talking about, you know, uh, like their own lives and unique stuff. And some some people even talking about like, you know, some sci-fi stuff, like upper consciousness, whatever. There's like so much you can do with music, you know, and different ways you can express yourself that it's, it's just cool to see, uh, yeah, how, how cultures collide and whatnot. Super, it's really, really cool. I remember we were talking about Ty when we were at the 626. Yeah. Driving, he just, he would be showcasing me all these West Coast uh, Asian rappers and all these guys. And I was like, yo, the music's Yeah, really cool. e even the Asian rappers, man, there's like so, there's so many different, uh backgrounds that people come from you know and i know like 
California, we have a lot of like gangbangers, a lot of like gangbanging Asians. Uh, so they have their own like niche too, you know, um, who, who have stuff that's like more true to them and true to how they came up. Um, but at the same time, you have people like me who come from like different backgrounds as well. When I'm, I'm not trying to be something I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm talking about my own experiences uh, as well. And yeah, it's, it's cool seeing, I think, every spectrum. Like I even know a guy uh, down in L.A. who, you know, he works, he works in finance as well. But he's like a really talented uh, singer and rapper. So, you know, he, he talks about his like day job and stuff, you know, in, in his music, which is like, you know, traditionally something that you would think is uncool. But, you know, he pulls it off um and it sounds good <laughs> i hear you i hear you it's cool um so our parents all our parents especially immigrants they come over um you know to, to live that american dream right to live yeah. the american dream so what's what's your american dream dude like what's what's the goal for you and what are you looking at in regards to life dude mm. You know, this is something that I've been trying to figure out a lot as well during during these last few months of uh, solitude <laughs> and lockdown. Uh, I think definitely music has always been a form of expression to me and it's something that, you know, I don't think I'll ever stop doing. Um, and, you know, ultimately, yeah, my goal would be to uh, have my music hit a lot more people and have a much wider reach and it'd be awesome to, you know, help my mom buy a house and help, you know, put on the rest of my family. Um, through stuff I'm doing through music uh, and I think like at the end of the day what I want to do is you know help my own family and also help my own community um, the people that came up around me and where I grew up in um, and, and that's kind of also like one of the goals of sorry the uh, South Bay Summer Project uh, what, what I thought going into it was like I feel like there's so much talent out in San Jose, just in the local scene and such also such like a unique culture, not even like in California or within the Bay Area, but like that city in particular of San Jose has like such a niche blend of uh, Asian subcultures, Hispanic subcultures, white subcultures. And, and like, yeah, I feel like, you know, of course, I'm, I'm more like invested in the Asian one because that's just where I am. But like, yeah, I, I feel like the Asians there act different from Asian people like in any other city. So I kind of wanted to put on for, for that community and, um, you know, talk a little bit about that. And if I can do that through music, then that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best way I know how. Is there like a show or a concert or a country that would be maybe like the place you want to perform at? Like hands down. Oh man. Uh, well, it would definitely be awesome to perform at something like Coachella <laughs> or Lollapalooza. Um, but I think eventually I also do want to go into China. I, I think the Chinese market would be awesome to tap into. I just need to brush up on my Chinese, which has been something that I'm your Chinese. like Cantonese, Mandarin. Yeah. My Chinese is pretty elementary <laughs> both, in both. You know, my mom spoke Mandarin to me growing up. My dad spoke Cantonese. So um, I have like a, five-year-old probably comprehension level <laughs> which one would you rather perfect first um i feel like i would rather perfect cantonese right now just because like where where i am most of my chinese speaking friends all speak cantonese so you know it just it would make more sense and able to just be able to talk to my friends um but in terms of yeah i think mandarin is definitely i think i guess more widely uh applicable since you know it's it's the main language in china and that's like, you know, but yeah, that's, that's just me though. I feel you. Me too. Same thing. I, yeah. I, I wish I could speak better Mandarin. Like my Mandarin's okay. Like I have, yeah. I always tell people whenever someone asks me, I'm like, but it, yeah. I can think that's so smooth that they say <laughs> the rest smooth. And then they yeah. like bombard me with just regular Mandarin. And I'm like, I yeah, yeah, yeah. That always happens. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't. And then I go back to English. <laughs> but um, what, I, what I wanted to ask next was we're going to go into rapid fire YOLO. It's going to call, call okay. YOLO. Okay. So we're going to get right into it. Dumbfounded or gin? Uh, uh, I, I guess dumbfounded. Ooh. Black pink or BTS? Uh, black pink. Wayne or Fab? Wayne. Big ear or Nas? Uh, Nas. Jackie Chan or Jet Li? 
Jackie Chan. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm gonna now do something. Is I'm gonna share my screen, dude, and we're gonna go into some. We're gonna go into social hour. So I'm gonna dig into a little bit of your socials, a little bit of stuff, and we'll get some behind stories about it. Cool. Okay. Sure. Right, let's do this. Uh, share the screen. All right. Yeah. You found all. Oh yeah. This was uh. This was when I graduated, man. This was 2016. Even right. when, when you're graduating, you still got like this swag, this like, this like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was a fun time. Was you, yeah, how? Hmm? Yeah, this was a fun time. Um, that was the end of four years at that school, man. And that definitely, I learned a lot over there. So this was a, <laughs> this was a great experience. Wow. Well, your parents should have been like, must be really proud for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, my mom was definitely always the one that pushed me to go to, uh, you know, a good university. My dad really wanted me to just go to, uh, like, uh, Monterey college because he didn't want to pay tuition. Um, so there was like that kind of struggle growing up too, like between what the two of them wanted. Um, but, you know, I'm glad things turned out the way it did because I think I learned a lot more here than, you know, I, I did back home. And, um, you know, luckily I had financial aid to help. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to the next one. So. Sure. All right, dude. You've got a for people who don't know, you have a cooking channel on your YouTube. Yeah. This is something I, um, I was, I've been doing like on and off. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to do it again. I actually just put one up today. That's uh, that good with uh um yeah for for a little bit i did want to put out uh like a regular cooking series but i think it just uh, I, I guess i wasn't consistent enough with it <laughs> it's kind of hard balancing that with like music and and like all these other all this other type of content as well what's harder shooting a cooking video or shooting a music video i think a music video is definitely a lot more work like the the cooking videos is like you know a few hours in an afternoon um and yeah <laughs> i think music video definitely has has a lot more more work put in uh, okay and all the recipes that you're doing these are all just straight up from you yeah this is stuff i made up i i don't really follow recipes that well but you know in these newer ones uh this fall one i just put out that that was a uh, gracie's recipe that she had put together so that one wasn't my recipe because I, I didn't know how to make pho this chow mein recipe was mostly just me tossing the stuff together <laughs> yeah, and then you've got your you got your second one which is the um, the red braised pork belly oh yeah so this one i kind of got from my mom and i made my own variation on it that one was good this one looked hella tasty this one i did wow was this march this was last march wow this okay. feels this feels like forever ago this is before i moved into this new spot. that was my old apartment in east oakland all right next one dude who is this little dude? Oh yeah, that was me in my uh, in Seaside, in my um, my grandma's house. Can <laughs> on this one? I think I think. Can I see? Is that like a? I, is that a cigarette? It's a lollipop. I think my mom tried to pierce my ears that night. <laughs> I distinctly remember that because it was like painful, and I was like, no, like don't do it. That shit hurts. So she didn't pierce it. I'm gonna try to zoom into this. I don't know if there's a mark or something. I don't think so. Oh, maybe not. But yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was my uh, that was my costume that year. I don't remember how old I was, but I was a little kid. Hold on, that was a costume for real. Yeah, that was my Halloween costume. I actually thought you were just playing with the caption. You're like pretending it was. Oh Halloween. no, no, that was my Halloween costume. I went around the neighborhood like that. Ah, uh, what are those shoes? Those shoes. Yeah, are I wish I had that drip still. <laughs> you totally could. You totally could pull it off. Yeah. All right, next one, dude this one specifically oh, yeah. painting yeah. Oh. <laughs> let's talk about painting like you, you do a little bit of it you've been posting quite a lot about painting and art and stuff like so is that like something you about or yeah i mean i'm just fucking around for fun you know this was uh honestly dude we were on we were i was on a good amount of acid when i did this <laughs> the best, most amount of creativity you know 
Yeah, but um, you know, this was it, it's it, it kind of is something. You know, it, it's like a school of koi fish on top, and on the bottom is also it, it's like a, a a mountain valley, and there's like a little blue lake down there in the middle, and that right. that school of koi fish on top is supposed to be inside that that little lake. That's <laughs> is a, that's is this nice an stuff. aerial. Is this like a top down or? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the top half is a top down, and the bottom half is the whole whole shebang. So this is this part right here. Yeah, that is, is is inside down there in that little that little blue patch. No, to the right. To the right. Uh, uh down down to the left. <laughs> All right. Anyways, here. Anyway, yeah, that okay. little patch. That's the lake. That's a lake in the mountain range. And if you see this, uh, this painting up there this chinese painting of of the mountains is kind of it's kind of inspired by that okay i mean when if this hits millions of dollars dude i'm so excited i'm so excited i, lost, I can, I can I tell lost that piece like, already <laughs> what i lost that piece already dude <laughs> i think i lost it that day bro you could have been the next bank ski man yeah somebody stole it they knew it was too valuable <sighs> I was going to be like, I would have known the description and I would have been able to curate it all. Yeah. all right. Last one, last one. Just this one. This yeah. One. Yeah, my, uh, my mom and my grandma went to Mongolia like last year. Um, that's my mom on the left and my grandma. And, you know, they can't travel anymore because of what's going on. But uh, <laughs> I didn't go with them. It looked like a lot of fun, though. Mm hmm and that looks cool. It looks super cool. And I brought it up because, like, family's so important. Family's so important. We talk about it. And Definitely. it's it's cool because you, you mention your mom and dad a lot and your family and everything. So, For sure. all right, dude. Let's get ooh, back into – you still there? Yeah, I'm here. You see me? Yeah. Cool. Um, now, last thing I wanted to talk about is you have punchlines, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You, yeah. you have punchlines in your songs. They're not, they're not like, they're smooth, but you'll come with like that final combo L1, <laughs> R1, square, triangle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah. That just came with like, how I started rapping, you know? Like, uh, I, I listened to a lot of punchline rap when I, was, when I was starting to rap. When I was in like middle school and high school, I listened to like a lot of Wayne and Fab and like Los and like Gambino and whatnot and uh you know all the yeah th these were guys that kind of I've emulated especially Wayne dude like when when I when I was starting to get into hip-hop um well when I was starting to get into hip-hop you know my uncle put me on to a lot of like west coast stuff uh he listened to a lot of like pimp music uh oh. Too Short and Snoop Dogg and I was like cool you know like I was I, I like I liked it but it didn't like inspire me in the same way until, you know, I started getting into like more punchline rap and I was like, now that shit is like funny. <laughs> and that was like kind of what I wanted to do. So I started out like writing in that style uh, when I started writing. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that's something that's, I think my style has definitely evolved over time, but that's something that has always like kind of stayed. Like I'll try to, if I, if I can't figure out, if I'm trying to tell a story or if I'm trying to like say something and I can't figure out what to put in the next line, I'll throw in a punchline instead. <laughs> True. Yeah. I want to bring that up because you've got some really good ones, and I'm going to read them out. I'm going to read punch. Oh, right. oh, good. Um, here, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe say half and see if you can finish the other half. All right, sure. I'll see if I remember. She's Taiwanese, but she drink like she Korean. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I'm stunning like Jack Ma. Oh, my chain from Alibaba. Hey. A mooncake red bean in the bread roll. Uh, fuck. <laughs> What's the next one? All right, mooncake red bean in the bread roll. Don't tell mama, yeah, yeah. For the red envelopes. Hey, okay. Milk tea with the sago and taro. Balls in her mouth make her look like ham taro. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I might be chow mein, but I go... Oh, uh, but your bitch call me chow fun. Oh, but I go hard like old rice. <laughs> now the other one's a good one too. Yeah. I'm counting numbers like Sudoku, sipping lychee flavor boba soju. Oh, count numbers like Sudoku, sipping lychee flavor boba soju. 
Oh man, this is from Dumplings. I know, but it's been so long since I did the song. I can't remember the next line. All right, I'll pull it out. It's, I'll say the whole thing because I need to do it justice. You can't have it like that. <laughs> I'm counting numbers like Sudoku, <laughs> sipping leaky flavor boba soju. Thought I told you, getting tail like I'm Goku. Oh, get it tail like I'm Goku. That's what I said. Yeah, I forgot about that. I thought it was going to be show you or something like, uh, like, yeah, salt. This one should be pretty easy. She's Vietnamese. Uh, mommy Vietnamese. She's sipping VSOP. <laughs> 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 I love it. And our last one is I got M's on my mind. Like a Maja Vegeta. Bam. <laughs> Punchlines all day, dude. I mean, man. that's pretty much that's it, man. This is a wrap. This is fun. I want yeah. to take stages all the time. You get stages, you're always doing shows and stuff. The stage is yours now, Charles. Let the people know about anything, any drops, where they can find you, um, all oh. that stuff, merch, etc. Oh, yeah. So definitely this tasty music video, July 24th, is going to be probably uh, my best video I've done yet. You know, probably on par with ABG. Like, I'm super excited to show you guys. We filmed this shit last year, but it's there's been so much work behind the scenes on, like, logistics and all this other stuff. But it's finally done, um, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's coming out. Um, I got a song with a uh, Guap Dad 4000 coming in August called Ice JJ Fish, and that one's also gonna be a lot of fun. And the album South Bay Summer comes in September, and like I, the whole vibe of this album is just like, you know, it's pretty upbeat and lighthearted, and it's something that you can cruise around and have fun too. Uh, and you know, it, it it is about a South Bay Summer, like particularly probably like last summer, but. I think it's something that has like a little flavor for every season. So, you know, you're not limited to listening to it in the summertime. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Those are my new drops coming out soon. Uh, you know, you know, check me out on whatever, man. <laughs> what is it? What's your website? Uh, chowmain.com. And then Instagram, chowmain. Uh, I think my Twitter is large chowmain because chowmain was taken. <laughs> you on TikTok? Uh, I am on TikTok. I mean, I got to use TikTok more. My TikTok is also just chowmain. You got you to gotta use some TikTok and like get some song up there and get fire. Yeah, man. I'm on it. Good fire. Good fire. All right, dude. Well, that's pretty much it. Thanks for joining me, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. As always. Appreciate you. Once this whole COVID thing's done, I'm coming back down there. We're going to go you cook it up. Set, man. Stuff. This sounds good. All right, homie. I'm uh, going okay. off now. Peace. Peace brother. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>